Hi, I'm Gary and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Bose S1 Pro and the Bose S1 Pro Plus. We're gonna first start off by doing a quick review of the Bose S1 Pro, just to make sure we understand all the features that came with that unit. And then we're gonna dive into the all new Bose S1 Pro Plus and talk about all the new features they've added to it, plus a couple quirks that I'm not quite sure I like about it. So stick with me. Now let's start by talking about the Bose S1 Pro. The Bose S1 Pro has essentially four positions that you can sit the unit in. You have the flat position like I have here. You have the tilted back position. You can then also lay it on its side like this so it acts more as like a monitor. And conveniently what Bose has added is the ability to rotate the logo which I'm sure they appreciate from a marketing standpoint. But I do feel like the clicking of this is a lot louder than probably what it needs to be. You can also mount this unit on a traditional speaker stand with the hole in the back of the unit here. And for transportation purposes, there is a handle on top of the unit, uh, which comes in very handy. This unit isn't too heavy. It probably weighs right around the 14, 15 pound mark. Uh, it has a 5,500 milliamp hour battery that gives you 11 hours of playback time. Now your playback time will vary depending upon what you're doing, whether that's um, you know playing something that has a lot of bass in it that's causing the amplifier to work uh, harder, or if you're uh, using Bluetooth built into the system, that's also gonna kind of take away from uh, that battery uh, a little bit inside the unit. The battery is replaceable, although not uh, readily easily. Uh, I was hoping that would be something they would fix in the S1 Pro Plus, but the battery does still need a screwdriver to take the bottom panel out, pull the battery out. Um, you can swap it, replace it, uh, put it back in, put those screws back in. Uh, the battery is different between the S Pro uh, um, S1 Plus and just the Pro model, uh, but they are the same size at 5,500 milliamp hours. If we turn over to the control panel on the unit, we have three different channels on this unit. Uh, you have the, your primary channel, your secondary channel, and a tertiary channel. And you're able to adjust the reverb, the treble, and the bass using these knobs here. And then you have a volume control uh, that you use to control the inputs completely separately. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit different with the third channel is this is the Bluetooth channel and it only has a, uh, it only does Bluetooth or a 3.5 millimeter jack in this channel to get audio in and you can't adjust the reverb, the bass, and the treble on this particular channel on this unit. You have a quarter inch output on this unit. There is a USB-C plug on this unit, but that's only used for Bose and that's a little bit different on the S1 Pro Plus and we'll get into that one a little bit later on. The power button is a little tricky on this unit. I'm not sure why they did this considering most uh, you know, devices that are on the market today don't require this kind of extra complication for charging the unit. But the power button is actually a rocker button that has three different positions. The current position that I have now is just the standby position or the off position. You can flick it up and that gives you the on position and that will allow the unit to work either from the battery or while it's plugged in. When this unit is plugged in, it will charge the battery and allow you to operate it at the same time, which is you know good functionality and honestly is what is just to be expected from electronics these days. In the third position, which is all the way down, this allows the battery to charge faster. Now, I'm not sure why Bose added this feature, but it is in the unit and I feel like it just adds an unnecessarily complication to this particular model. You do have your standard power port here um, on the unit and you know the control panel is just basically pretty simple. This unit doesn't have any connectivity with the Bose application or anything like that. Now I will preface this 
this video after talking about the S1 a little bit here is I am not a professional musician. I actually don't play any instruments at all these days. Uh, what I use this for primarily is tailgating uh, and just, you know, carrying it around with me in the event that, you know, I'm hanging out with some friends and we just need some, some music being played. Uh, I know this is probably overkill for a Bluetooth speaker, uh, but I'm a big sound quality person and uh, this does come in really handy more often than you think for, um, you know, any time that we're getting people together. So that's just a little bit of information on the Bose S1 Pro. All right. Now let's jump into the S1 Pro Plus. So right off the bat, you can notice that there is a difference with the shape of this unit. They've rounded the edges off on the unit a little bit more. Um, it still has the same handle on the top of the unit, and it still has essentially the same four positions that you can put the unit in. Flat like we have it here on the desk, the angled approach, then you have the monitor approach. You can also still rotate the Bose logo on the unit, Again, I still think this is a lot louder than what it needs to be. Just seems aggressive to me. And then it still has uh, the hole on the bottom that you can put on your standard speaker stand. Where this unit starts to really differ from the old uh, Pro unit, where the Pro Plus unit is, is they've changed the controls around completely on this unit. You still have the two XLR ports uh, for channels one and two. And what they've done now on channel three is they've added a quarter inch uh, port for uh, input audio as well as still maintaining the 3.5 millimeter jack. Uh, and then you still have your button here for Bluetooth. They've changed the output of the unit where now instead of using a quarter inch output, you do get the XLR port for your output. They've added something that probably should have been in the first unit is a USB port that allows you to charge USB devices. So if you are using this in the instances that I typically use it for, this is really gonna help you keep your phone charged or whatever device you're using to uh, play back your audio. One of the probably hidden gems of this unit that I haven't heard talked about in any other video on YouTube is the addition of the USB-C port. Now, I think a lot of people just assume that this USB-C port was the same as it was on just the Pro model. But what they've done with this USB-C port is you can now plug this into your computer and you can actually export all three of these channels in mono directly to your laptop. So you can adjust the audio individually coming from this unit through the USB-C cable to your computer and be able to manually fine tune how that audio is being displayed. And then using the third channel here, you can actually adjust the output audio. I think this is gonna be really helpful and handy for anybody who might be a street artist or DJs or something along those lines that would like to record what they do during a particular session and have that stored on their laptop later on. I think that's a hidden gem that you have to dig in the documentation for this unit to find, but I do think it's very handy and I could see a lot of people using it. I have no use for it personally, but I could see it coming in handy. Another big change that they've made with this unit is the power button. The power button is just a simple press for on and a press for off now. No more of that three rocker system and really having to pay attention to if you want the battery to charge faster or not. So if we just push the power button one time here, you will see the displays coming on inside the unit. Now three displays on the unit correlating to each one of the different channels. These buttons are now uh, used to control these displays as well as adjust the functionality. So if you push in on these buttons, it'll allow you to rotate through the same functionality as you have on the Pro. So you can still adjust the reverb, the treble, the bass, and the, the volume by the individual channel. And I think that's really good functionality. One thing that I did not like maybe not like about the unit, but I thought was interesting that they added to the application and not the unit itself, was the ability to just mute a particular channel. In the app, the Bose application, you can now connect that to this particular unit and you can control the bass, the reverb, the treble, the individual volume of these channels, and you also have a mute button where you can instantly mute a channel or unmute a channel. You can't do that physically on the unit. You have to either turn the volume all the way down or turn the volume all the way up. Now, 
I think it would be really easy for Bose to add an update where you could just basically push and hold one of these in for two or three seconds and then that would cause that particular channel to mute. But that kind of brings me to my next quirk about this unit. While they have added the functionality to use this USB-C port to plug into your computer, that's also the only way that you can update this unit. So in the event that Bose wants to add new functionality to this unit, it's probably not going to be one of those things that's going to be readily picked up by people. Even when you go through the app, it tells you you have to pull, get, plug in the USB-C port and perform the update from your computer itself. Now, I don't really understand this thinking from Bose. I have a Bose 900 soundbar, a Bose 700 soundbar, I have the Bose QC700s and the QC45 headphones, and all of those are able to be updated over the air either with Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or through Bluetooth from your phone. So I think with all this new functionality and these displays that Bose has added onto this unit, I think that was a big miss there, not giving you the ability to update this unit directly from your phone. They've also gone ahead and added on these new ports where you can get wireless interfaces to the Bose S1 Pro, uh, Pro Plus. And you can actually put two of those into this particular unit. When you put one into this unit, it will take five seconds to pair to that particular channel and then you can pull it out of here, plug it into your guitar or plug it into your sound mixer or whatever you need to do. Those transmitters come in two different form factors. They come in the XLR form factor and they also come in a quarter inch form factor so you can plug directly into a guitar or something along those lines. Now, they did do something really good here where in between sets or when you're just not using the transmitter, you can put it in here and it will actually charge the transmitter. I do feel one thing they kind of went wrong with the transmitters is they only have a four hour battery life on the transmitters. This unit can do 11 hours. Uh, personally, I get about eight hours out of these units when I'm using them, but I feel like it would have been really nice to get uh, the transmitter up more to half of that 11 hours or um, you know, more closer to the entire 11 hours of the unit. I feel like a lot of people will just run into the place where they might be playing a set and then um, they do a very long set, they're off stage for a little while, and they forget to take that transmitter and put it back in here to charge, and now they have a dead transmitter and they have to plug in a cable uh, to this particular unit anyway. So that's just something that I was thinking about. Functionality, I will probably never use. The, uh, the thing I'll probably do with it most is uh, use one of the wireless transmitters for a laptop or something along those lines. I have ordered uh, the XLR uh, transmitter for this unit. Uh, it's not here yet, but I will do a video on that later. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel so that I can go in more detail about how that wireless transmitter works. Uh, a little information about the wireless transmitters. They are not Bluetooth, they actually work off of the 2.4 gigahertz system. So what that's gonna do for you is give you a really high quality system while also um, giving you low latency to this unit so you don't have to worry about any delays or anything like that. Bose is reporting you get about 30 feet with the wireless transmitter from the unit and you can use two transmitters at a time with this particular unit. I've had this Bose S1 Pro Plus for about a week, maybe two weeks now, and I'm very impressed with it. Uh, I think the sound quality is really good. Uh, the only difference that I've kind of noticed between these two units is I've had to play with the bass a little bit more on this unit to get it right where I want it to be, but overall, I think it's a very high quality, very good unit. The S1 Pro has dropped in price. Bose is still selling this unit. I believe this unit has dropped down to $599 right now, and this unit is currently at $699, but I'm sure if you scour the internet, you can find these at uh, lower prices all over the place. One additional feature that is in both of these units is Bose does have a mechanism that sits inside these units that optimizes the sound quality based on how you sit it. So whether you tilt the unit back like this or you're using it as a monitor, the system itself detects that you're putting it in those different positions and then change how it's outputting the sound from this unit. And I think that's you know, something that's just like really good uh, to have to make sure that you can use the unit the way you want, but still get uh, a, a representative sound quality inside this unit that you're looking for. 
Both of these units weigh approximately the same. We're only talking a pound or two uh, difference between the two. Uh, I do think this unit is really easy to use with the, with the new functionality. And one thing I forgot to mention is you do have a light that shows you when you have a signal going through each one of these units. This light will actually turn green when you have signal going through that unit, and it'll also tell you when you're clipping on any one of these individual channels, which I also think is a really nice touch that they've added to this unit. This really helps that soloist artist or somebody who's um, you know, not a professional sound mixer but wants to focus on just playing their audio or doing whatever they're doing. This gives them some things right in front of them that they can look at, they can adjust, and they can move on and focus on the thing that they're doing and not being an, an audio file or focusing on the audio of these units. I am not an audio professional by any means, and I'm not gonna you know, claim to review the audio and say, hey, these are better than this or better than that. I'm saying that I like the sound quality that comes out of these units. Um, as with most Bose products, they are a little bit light on bass, uh, but you do have the ability to adjust that. Um, and I think they're you know, just really great units. I am gonna be getting rid of this unit. I only need one for, for what I'm doing, but I'm very happy with the quality and what you're getting out of this unit. It's, I mean, they're both just made very well. They're tanks. I've seen people throwing these things around and you know, you still be able to pick them up. I've seen them fall over and they still just work phenomenally. So I do think this is a really great product. Um, I am gonna go a little bit later into this video and talk about uh, the app that connects to this unit and how that app works. There's a couple things that are finicky about that app, but I do want to get into that so I can tell you exactly what's going on here. So why don't you just stick around for a little bit longer as we jump into the app. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just jump into the Bose app here and let the application load on my iPhone. And we'll go ahead and scroll down and wait for the Bose S1 Pro Plus to connect. All right, the S1 Pro is connected, so we can go ahead and tap on that. And now what we can see inside the app here is we can see the three different channels. Uh, we can see that we can adjust the treble, the bass, and the reverb on channels one and two. And then channel three, which is the Bluetooth channel, we can only adjust the volume, treble, and bass. So one of the quirks and the things that I didn't particularly like about the app is on particularly the left and right side, when you try to turn these up, see, I can't get it all to go all the way up because um, you, it just doesn't detect it when you get to the edge of the screen. So it's a, it's a little different and it, it just seems like very finicky uh, for the app. Um, I, do, I really do like what you can do in the app though as far as like being able to adjust your treble or adjust your bass on the fly as you want to go. And uh, I think it's really cool that they've added mute buttons in here so you can mute the channels individually or you can do them all at the, you know, all of them relatively at the same time, uh, which is another really good thing. You also do have the ability to do tone matching. So you can hit the tone matching down here and you can specify essentially the type of microphone that you have plugged into the unit to get the tone matching perfect for that particular microphone. And then you also have the ability to set scenes, which are, were essentially uh, presets for the unit for a configuration that you already have set up. You can tap this in the bottom right hand corner here, and then you can save a new scene, or you can zero the board out, or you can recall a scene that you were already using. So I just wanted to do a quick walk through the app, show you the quick quirk, uh, quirks that I really don't like as far as like being able to control the buttons. I'm sure Bose will come out with an update on this to you know, further enhance this application. Um, and I guess the one thing that I did wanna show is I did talk about earlier in the video uh, being able to update the product. And if you do click on product update here, you can see the current version I'm on. But then if you read the details on the screen, it says review the update instructions for details on how to download and install the latest version of this project, the, uh, the latest version. You'll need a computer and a USB-C cable to get started. So right there, it's just basically telling you that you can't do this through the phone, that it has to be done through uh, connecting it to your computer, which I think is going to just stop a lot of people from just doing the updates um, all together. All right. 
Well, we just went through a quick review of the Bose S1 Pro and the Bose S1 Pro Plus. Talked through a couple different things in this video, going from what I liked about the, the Pro, what I liked about the Pro Plus, some of the issues that I've had with the Pro Plus, and a lot of the things that I liked about the Pro Plus. I hope this video really helped you out. I really do like this little unit. I think it's a great purchase, uh, even though it is a little on the higher end of the, the price point. But I do think that if you're using this for uh, being a solo artist or a street performer or something along those lines, you won't be disappointed in this unit. It'll get you up and running very quickly and won't get you all distracted with making sure your audio quality is at the best and having to have a great understanding about audio itself and, and trying to make things sound clear. So um, I really do recommend this product and I hope if you have any questions or concerns, you put those down in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel as I'll be doing more updates on the S1 Pro Plus once I get the wireless transmitter as well as all kinds of other techno technological things that are out there. So again, thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.